So in this video, we're going to look at two new hydrocarbon derivatives, carboxylic acids and esters. Characteristic of carboxylic acids are carboxyl groups. A carboxyl group is a carbon atom that is double bonded to an oxygen atom, similar to what we saw in our carbonyl groups with aldehydes and ketones, but it's all, this carbon is also single bonded to a hydroxyl group. When it comes to naming carboxylic acids, we follow, follow similar rules to what we've done previously. We find out how many carbons there are, and what would the name of that be if it was an alkane. We drop the E from the root alkane name, and in the case of carboxylic acids, we add oic acid to the end. Two carboxyl groups, of course, would be dicarboxylic acid. Those prefixes are used just as we have previously. So here we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon chain. Don't forget to, to count this carbon. And we start our counting there, as we did with aldehydes. And we can see a 5 carbon chain. The root name would be pentane. So we drop the E from pentane, and we now have the name pentanoic acid. Here we have a 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon chain. So the root name for that would be butane. So we know we have butanoic acid, but we also on carbon one, two, three, four have a chloro substituent. So our name is going to be 4-chlorobutanoic acid. Now this molecule here has a lot of strange groups. We see an alcohol group, we see, or a hydroxyl group, we see a carbonyl, we see a carboxyl. And now we've sort of been learning the functional groups in their order of priority while naming. So, so when an alcohol group is a substituent, we call it hydroxy. When a carbonyl group is a substituent, we call it oxo. So, and we know that because we have a carboxyl group, that this must be a carboxylic acid. And we, just like we did with aldehydes, we start numbering from that carbon. So our name ends up being 4-hydroxy-3-oxo-hexanoic acid. Now just like with aldehydes, when we're drawing carboxylic acids, we start carbon 1 at the carbon in the carboxyl group, in the C double bond OOH. So octanoic acid has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and oic acid tells us it is a carboxylic acid with a carboxyl group at carbon 1. Pentanoic acid tells us that we have a carboxyl group and a 5-carbon chain. The rest of the name tells us our substituent, a 1-carbon substituent, and where to find it. And of course, we're going to number from the carboxyl group, 1, 2, 3, to make 3-methyl pentanoic acid. Now, the properties of carboxylic acids are given to them by that carboxyl group. Not only do they have a C double bonded to an O, like an aldehyde or a ketone, making them polar, but they also have that same carbon is bonded to an oxygen uh, hydroxyl group, like in an alcohol. So they're very polar due to that carboxyl group. They are also capable of hydrogen bonding because of the OH in that hydroxyl group. Um, now, carboxylic acids with fewer than five carbons are soluble in water, and that's due to the hydrogen bonding that they're able to do with water. Just like we saw with our previous functional groups, the longer that chain, uh, that hydrocarbon chain becomes, the less soluble the molecule becomes because of the nonpolar property that that chain has. Now, carboxylic acids, as suggested in the name, carboxylic acids have acidic properties, so they affect acid-base indicators. That's one way you can tell if you have carboxylic acids in your solution. And they also react with bases to form ionic compounds, so salts and water. They also have higher melting points or boiling points than uh, hydrocarbons of equivalent length, so any alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes of the same length um, the carboxylic acid, because of the stronger intermolecular forces, are going to have a higher melting point. Now in the last video, we saw the controlled oxidation of a primary alcohol to an aldehyde. Now if we continue to oxidize that aldehyde, we can go all the way to a carboxylic acid. Indeed, this reaction is very hard to control, and only certain uh, oxidizing agents are able to stop at the aldehyde stage. 
So you'll recognize this 4-carbon aldehyde as butanal, and if we oxidize it, um, we end up with a carboxylic acid. And a 4-carbon chain with a carboxyl group is butanoic acid. Now this reaction is actually what happened in early breathalyzers. Uh, a dichromate oxidizing agent was used to oxidize the ethanol in someone's breath. So ethanol is the alcohol that people drink. It oxidized it to ethanol, so the aldehyde, and then on to ethanoic acid. And that caused a color change in the dichromate, and they could tell the amount of alcohol based on the extent of the color change. Now esters are awesome because they smell really good. They're often the kind of compounds you find in artificial flavors or scents. Um, and an ester is an organic compound that contains a carbonyl group bonded to a second oxygen atom, which is bonded to another hydrocarbon chain on this side, and obviously our, other car our carbonyl is bonded to a hydrocarbon chain on the other side. Now, esters are formed from the condensation reaction of a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, and we'll look at that in a, in a slide or two, but it's important to know this because it's reflected in the name. The first part of the name comes from the alcohol, and it's the side of the molecule that does not have the C double bond O incorporated in it. The second part of the name comes from the carboxylic acid. And that's the side of the chain with the C double bond O in it. And we put the ending O8 on it instead of oic acid like we did with carboxylic acids. Now I know that just sounded like a whole bunch of words, but it'll make a little more sense when we do this example. So look at the blue part of the chain. Um, we can see our C double bond O uh, bonded to our other oxygen there in the center. Now the side with the C double bond O in blue is the part that came from our carboxylic acid. The black part of our compound down here with just the oxygen attached to it, oh, we're a little bond there, there we go. Since it does not have a C double bond O, we can see that that came from our alcohol. Now when naming, the alcohol part comes first. And if this came from an alcohol that was five carbons long with the O at the end, it mu that alcohol must have been pentanoanol. So the beginning of our carbo or ester, sorry, the beginning of our ester name is pentyl. Now, if the part of our ch uh, chain that has C double bond O is one, two, three, four carbons long, it must have come from butanoic acid. So the second part of our ester name is going to be butanoate, because esters end with oate, and the cart that comes from the alcohol obviously ends with yl, because giving us pentyl butanoate. Let's try another one, because that must have just sounded like utter nonsense. So first part of the name, the part of the chain that is just attached to the oxygen. We end that with yl, so one carbon is attached to the oxygen, no C double bond O there, so it goes first, and we call it methyl. The second part of the name is the chain that has the C double bond O in it. So it's a three carbon chain that has the C double bond O in it. So we are gonna call that propanoate. So our name is methylpropanoate. All right, so to draw it, we just work backwards. Butyl, since it ends in YL, we know that's the part of the ester that doesn't have a C double bond O. It's the part that came from the alcohol. Now, ethanoate, it's the second part of the name, ends in O8, so it must have had the C double bond O. And indeed, butyl ethanoate. And again, with our second example, methyl, that's the chain that just is attached to an oxygen, no C double bond O. Now, benzenoic acid. Benzenoate comes from benzenoic acid, and that's a carboxylic acid a group or a carboxyl group attached to benzene. So we need to attach this, without that part, onto our ester. And there you have methylbenzoate. Also could be called methylbenzenoate, because we did say that we just sort of removed the E. So properties of esters, delicious smells, wintergreen, banana, um, but they're similar to carboxylic acids, um, which gives them some of their properties, but they lack that hydroxyl group. So they're less polar because they don't have that 
O uh, bonded to the H on the carbon, and they can't form hydrogen bonds because they don't have the hydroxyl group. So small esters are soluble in water, but they are less soluble and have lower melting points than carboxylic acids of the same length because they don't have the hydrogen bonding. So they don't have that strong intermolecular force. They only have dipole, dipole. Uh, they have similar melting point and boiling points to aldehydes and ketones. Again, because they have the similar functional group to aldehydes and ketones, they have that carbon double bonded to the oxygen. So esterification is how we make an ester. It's the reaction of a carboxylic acid and an alcohol to form an ester and water. Our catalyst is concentrated sulfuric acid, and we also need heat. So here's an example with pentanoic acid and ethanol. So this is our carboxylic acid and our alcohol. And hopefully this will help you see where the name comes from a little bit. So our catalysts are concentrated sulfuric acid and heat. And we produce our ester by losing a molecule of water, the hydroxyl group from the pentanoic acid and the hydrogen from the alcohol. So we keep the five carbon chain with the C double bond O from the pentanoic acid to give us the pentanoate and we keep the two carbon chain attached to the oxygen to get the ethyl of ethyl pentanoate. The hydroxyl group from the carboxylic acid and the H from the alcohol is what forms our water. Hydrolysis um, is the opposite of the esterification process. So instead of making an ester, um, we're pulling it apart. We're breaking it apart. It's called saponification because it's used in soap making. So if we add a base to propyl benzenoate, we break apart the ester into a, the salt of the, of the carboxylic acid and the alcohol. So in this case, we'll get We'll get the salt of benzenoic acid and we'll also get our alcohol propanoanol.